It's about that time of day again here, boys and girls. Welcome back. Welcome back. It's the 21st day of May, 2014. May 21st, 2014. Welcome back to your nightly newsletter. My name is Joseph James. I'm broadcasting live from our corporate headquarters here in sunny and very warm today, Los Angeles, California. Hope you guys are having a great Wednesday evening. Today's newsletter. Got an exciting newsletter in store for you guys today. We'll talk about crude oil going to 104. I think we were thinking about that today, weren't we? We'll talk about what happens in the markets. Crude pushes higher. Gold pushes lower. The Russell had kind of a sloppy session. We pretty much expected that today. So a lot of what we expected today, we'll take a look at what happened in the markets. Then we're going to go into prepping for tomorrow. We'll take a look at tomorrow's news. We'll talk about the day of the week, the week of the month, the month of the year. We'll get ready for tomorrow's scenario. And then, of course, you know how it always goes. I'm going to make you wait until the end. We're going to roll up our sleeves. We're going to grab some charts and get ready for tomorrow's trading opportunities. We get a short week this week, so we're really trying to make all of our profit as quickly as possible. So buckle up those seatbelts. We've got a great newsletter in store for you guys and gals today. Before we jump into charts, I want to remind you all, if you're watching this video on our YouTube page, if you're watching it on anything else right now besides SidewaysMarkets.com, make sure you follow the link below the video on our YouTube page and head on over to Sideways Markets. That's our blog. Now, why should you go there? Well, because on the blog, you can download all of the newsletter charts for today. There is a link right below the video here on our blog this evening. And that link is going to allow you, just like it says, to download the newsletter charts and commentary. The reason why I do that for you, right, I don't do it for my health, I do it so that you can download all the charts and you can have them with you this evening for the newsletter or you can simply save them for tomorrow so you have them with you as a reference tomorrow as well. All right, so pause the tape, pause the video, click on that link, It'll take you over to slideshare.net. You can download a copy of all the charts, and that way you have a great resource for you here this evening so you can be ready for tomorrow. At the same time, please don't forget, I would love to invite you out to join our trade room tomorrow afternoon, Monday through Thursday afternoons. We invite all of our guests to come out and join us in the trade room. I have a special free pass for you. Don't miss the opportunity there. And then, of course, last but not least, don't forget, make sure you guys join our nightly newsletter mailing list. You will not be disappointed. Every evening at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, we send out this nightly newsletter to all of our subscribers. All righty. So make sure you guys get over to SidewaysMarkets.com, download a copy of the charts, join me in the trade room tomorrow, and, of course, don't forget to join our nightly newsletter. All righty. Now you got all the info you need here today. Let's get this party started. Now, it would be wrong to start tonight with anything else besides our good friend, the crude oil futures. Trading the 714 contract here on crude, well, I don't want to say we called it, but uh, yeah, okay, I'll just go ahead and say it. We nailed this thing out the park this week. Fundamentals, shenanigans in Ukraine, fundamentals, summer driving season, technicals, right? What were the technicals? We saw all these higher highs. Guys, I don't want to say it was easy, but it definitely wasn't difficult. Now, how did I know we were going to 104? I knew we were going to 104 because of the same things that I teach every single one of our students in our live trade room every day as members of School of Trade. If you want to know how I was so, I had so much wisdom predicted, it wasn't that big of a deal, right? I'm not, I'm not that good. Okay, the charts and the fundamentals told us what to think. I don't predict, I react. I reacted early this week to what we were seeing in the market. I use what happened in the past to predict the future. It's very, very simple. It's called technical analysis. And then, of course, the whole issue in Ukraine, the Memorial Day weekend, all of those are fundamentals that are just a little bit too easy to put together. So the puzzle came together pretty well. Now, that was the easy part. Now, here we are, way up here at 104. Where do we go from here? Well, I'll tell you right now, if you own a boat, an SUV, a camper, a big rig truck, you're going to the gas station because you better fill your tanks up because these prices are going to be going up the next 24 hours. Now, over the next 48 hours, it's difficult to say what the traders are going to do to react here, right? If I was still in this market right now, right, I took my profit earlier today at 104, 
we had a ton of our traders here in the office uh, this afternoon that held on to this thing. And I'm telling them all right now, you better take your money right now. And that's what I think a lot of people are probably going to do. They're going to cash out of this trade. They're going to take their money at 104. So I would expect price to pull back, right? Big pops usually always equal big drops, um, especially on crude. I mean, one of the easiest trades on crude is the, old, is the old fade the breakout, right? It goes up really fast. It comes down really fast. So everything we thought was going to come out this week pretty much has come to fruition. Now, it kind of beat me a few days early. I, I thought it would be later on this week we'd be at 104, but hey, I'll take whatever I can get. So right now, this actually presents a, a relatively difficult job now. Now, I can't justify buying anymore, all right? Not until we pull back. If I buy right now, I'm buying at a premium, and I don't do that. I buy at a discount. But Joe, it might go higher, but, 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 but I don't care. All I know is, is I've made a lot of money in my career buying at a discount. It's not time to change now, right? We can't let our emotions get in, us into trouble right now. So if you bank some profit, or if you haven't yet, definitely bank some profit here, all right? It might go to 110, it might go to 1.5, might, shoulda, coulda, woulda, right? All these ideas, absolutely, it might. But what we know right now is a bird in the hand is worth 10 in the bush. These markets have been difficult in 2014, so we are definitely gonna take our profit. I am going to look for a price to pull back tomorrow, all right? If I'm wrong, so be it. But that's what my plan says, and I've made a great living over the past 13 years following that plan. Today, we had a pretty big range, but there was this big gap up here, all right? Big gap up, and a big gap. Now, remember, we talk about Japanese candlestick reading. If you haven't read that book by Steve Nissen, right? What is it called? Uh, Beyond Candlesticks or something like that. Um, Shoot me an email, I'll give you guys information on it. But one of the things they talk about in Japanese candlestick reading is gaps, right? Or windows, as they call them, like to be filled. So this little juicy gap down here at 102, you know, 103 down 10250, it'll be interesting to see what here happens the rest of the week. All right, so let's let's put it that way. So big gap up. We we got 127 ticks of range in the US session. Now, if you measure this from yesterday's close all the way up it's still only 185 ticks. In crude oil terms, this is still a typical move. Remember, between 100 and 200 ticks of range, that is a typical move in my world. So over 200 ticks, then we're expecting tomorrow to be a very, very narrow range. It's really difficult to tell what tomorrow is going to bring. If I had to guess right now, though, I would guess a range-bound market, a much narrower range, and I would guess we pull back. I would guess we go lower here, right, on profit taking. And what you're going to see in a moment here is, is I'm going to show you another chart this evening. And that chart's going to show you our potentials. And our next leg up goes all the way to 106, all right? So stick around for that. This is just a good synopsis of what you're seeing right now on crude, what happened today. We're going to roll up the sleeves and get looking at what's for tomorrow in just a moment, all right? So 127 ticks, a typical range. We did close above 104. You'll notice the volume above 104. So the majority of the volume today was traded all the way at the highs. That means buyers and sellers are, are putting together their, their uh, well, we always say the volume are the votes. The volume are traders casting their votes for approval. So right now we can see the traders on crude are fully approving of that 104 even as being support below us. Opened up higher, closed higher, volume higher, two days higher, right? I mean, pretty obvious, this bad boy is bullish. We've known it all week. Now the big variable is, where do we go from here? My gut tells me we pull back, but my gut is not a trading strategy. Who knows what will happen out of Ukraine? This could keep going tomorrow. So stick around, and we're going to make sure we give you guys some, some strategies for tomorrow's price action, no matter what direction it goes. All right? But I'd be lying to you, though, if I said it wasn't a fantastic week on crude. What a great day on crude today. If you got all the move, wonderful. If you got a piece of the move, don't worry about it, guys. Trust me. This is a, this is a good move to grab. There'll be more where this came from. So hold on tight for more information on crude later on in the newsletter. Moving forward here, we go from a gorgeous chart to an ugh, ugly, ugly, ugly. What an ugly chart we have here today on the Russell. 
Now, if you look closely, I have I've drawn in here now a price wedge, right? So I got this price wedge here now on the Russell. Now, keep in mind, these are open and close charts right here. This VIP chart, this is a gap chart, right? This is an open and close chart. It's a pit chart, which means this only goes from 930 until 415. So this chart doesn't show you everything like you're going to see on the next chart we work with, but you can see how well those trend lines work. It's pretty remarkable when you think about the trend lines that we're, work, that we're seeing here because these trend lines are actually being drawn only using the pit session. Think about that for a second. This goes to show you how many traders really just use the pit session. All right, it's pretty remarkable. One of the reasons why I absolutely love day trading because all these in insane clues that we get, it's like a symphony orchestra without a conductor and every single instrument is in a different room. Imagine that for a second, right? If that doesn't blow your mind, I don't know what does. But the bottom line is, here in the Russell, we got exactly what we expected today, didn't we? Yesterday, we had a 250 tick range. The day before that, 250 ticks. So we had large range on Monday, large range on Tuesday. What do we always expect after a big range day? We always expect a large range to be followed by a narrow range. Now, today wasn't a narrow range, but it was definitely much sloppier, and it was relatively easy when you looked at it right from yesterday. You said, okay, we got this price wedge. It was relatively simple here to know where we we're going to go if we didn't just take off right up or down. So today was a range-bound market. We pretty much expected it. It wasn't a guarantee, but it was one of those things that two days in a row of very, very wide ranges we made a ton of money on this Russell Monday and Tuesday. Today was a day where we had to kind of suffer through a little bit of slop and chop. Now, if you followed the plan, buying the lows, selling the highs, you made some great money today on the Russell. So it wasn't that you couldn't make any money on it, but if you're looking for those big, excessive ranges today, that wasn't the case. And that's exactly what we expected, right? Today was definitely going to be a day of rest for this, for this uh, mini Russell futures. So 162 ticks. A relatively typical range. Again, my typical range here on these markets is 100 to 200. Once above 200, that's considered wide. Below 100, considered to be narrow. All right, 99 ticks would be typical. 201 would be typical. All right, I'm not talking specific. I'm just talking in that range. So pretty typical range there. What's very interesting here, though, is is how we're sticking right around this 1100. Right, we closed above 1100. The volume today. Again, opened neutral in the middle, right? Volume neutral in the middle. We closed neutral in the middle. And as I've been saying all week, if we get stuck in the mud around these dotted lines, we know to be careful, right? And so the prior week close, 1099.2, that, that was definitely the magnet today, as you can see. Above, below, above, below, and then we close back on the prior week close. Now, we would look at this chart and say, what? This market is balanced. We're right in the middle of this range. If I zoom out a little bit further, you can see there's that big range from last week. So remember, I'm keeping a very close eye on the highs, a very close eye on the lows. We're going to continue to buy lows and sell highs here on the mini Russell going into the end of the week. Now, this chart illustrates how sideways and range bound it was today. On the next chart that I give you, though, I'm going to give you some very specific levels that you can use to trade off of tomorrow. But again, keep a close eye. The levels I'm watching right now are going to be 1115, 1110, 1106. I'm watching the 88.6, the 84.7, and the 78.7. Right now, the way we look right now, we are range bound. We are balanced, which means we're not trending. So I'm looking for double tops to sell short at the highs, double bottoms or two steps or dragons or whatever reversal pattern we choose to use or whatever we see, I should say, at the lows. So right now, my plan regarding Russell, because we're balanced, I'm going to use the prior week close as the magnet right in the middle. As we go lower, I'm buying it back up. As we go higher, I'm selling it back down. All right, guys, hold on tight, though. We got one more chart to look at for all these markets, and I'm going to give you some strategies for tomorrow's trading session. And of course, last but not least, 
we can't forget about the old funny yellow metal, right? The gold futures. Now, the gold futures you guys can see here have been in another, they've been in a very messy scenario here the past few weeks. We're now starting to see some thawing out here. As you can see, when I zoom out here, it's a little bit crazy in this chart when I zoom out, but you can see here, I've got the range from last week right here. There's my range from last week. And again, you'll see we're just below that range right now. We got some lower highs, some lower lows. We're definitely moving lower. But we have one more obstacle to get past, and that's the prior two-week low, 1284.7. All right, so we got a little bit of support still waiting here before the next shoe drops here, and we're able to get short here on gold. So as of right now, I don't feel confident to say we're bearish just yet. But we're starting to look it, right? We're starting to get a little bit bearish here. Tough to tell exactly what they're waiting on right now on gold. I can only assume the traders on gold right now are waiting on is that there's a highly anticipated ECB report due out in the month of June. I hope we're not waiting for that. But who knows? All we know is, is right now we are definitely range bound with a slight hint of bearishness. A very, very narrow range on gold. Closing price, 88.1. We opened right in the middle of that range from yesterday. That's a neutral clue for today. We closed right at the lows. That's bearish. Volume down at the lows. That's bearish. We're definitely two two-day relationship, though. We're definitely sideways here over two days. Again, slightly bearish, though, right? We're seeing some lower highs, but we're not seeing lower lows right now little bit of a descending triangle here, if you will. All right? But then here's the important stuff. We haven't seen a very good trend. So unless this goal decides to catch an offer and just tumble tomorrow, we're probably going to see a lot of what we've already seen, which means as price goes lower, I'm, in, I'm originally looking for buying opportunities, right? As price goes lower, I'm looking to buy that low. Now, you can listen to me or not, right? But if we go lower tomorrow... I'm going to have a hard time selling short. Now, this chart, obviously, tells me more about what happened today. So a narrow range today, hopefully today's narrow range will result in a big wide range tomorrow. We shall see, right? Remember, we don't predict, we just react. If we see a great bearish personality tomorrow, I'm going to be very, very careful going through this area here. I have a trend line as well as a two-week low. I have a trend line, right, as you can see here as we go lower. So that's why I say it's going to be a little bit difficult to get short here tomorrow until we, until we can clear below all this extra support down bottom. Keep it safe. Keep it simple. Follow the plan we've had so far and be ready to buy when that price goes lower. All right, guys? So that takes care of what happened today. We got gold going sideways, slightly, right, slightly bearish. I'm still going to treat this as a range-bound market on gold. Russell is definitely balanced. So we're going to treat that as a range-bound market, buying lows and selling highs. And crude oil, well, we talked about crude already. I'm expecting a pullback tomorrow. I might be wrong. It's very difficult to tell where we go from here on crude because of that big run-up. Now, don't cheat. Don't cheat. We're not there yet. Now that you know more about what happened today, let's get ready for tomorrow. All right? Hindsight is behind us. We can learn from what happened today. But now let's get ready for tomorrow. Tomorrow is Thursday. The pretty much I'm going to say the last day of the week. We got a half day on Friday and half days on Friday. Remember when you were a kid? Did you get anything done on a half day of school? No, right? The only thing I got done on a half day of school was just right, joking around with my friends, counting down the minutes until the school bell rang. So just like when you were in school, it's amazing. You're a day trader now, but everything seems to be just like back when you were in grade school, right? Keep it simple. Be here on time, right? It's very, very simple stuff. So Friday is a half day. I would expect, we'll talk more about it tomorrow in the newsletter, but Friday's half day, it'll probably be from 8 till 1030. You know, we'll probably get a few hours of trading there on Friday morning, but that's about it. As far as I'm concerned, tomorrow is the day. Now, what I mean by that is imagine yourself as a major asset manager. Imagine you've got $100 billion of somebody else's money. Are you really going to be trading that capital on Friday with an early close? Hell no. You'll be putting your money to work tomorrow. 
All right, so put yourself in the shoes of other major asset managers. Remember, if you've got a trillion dollars of other people's money, the market lets you in, right? You don't go into the market because you're going to move the market. So Friday morning, probably not going to work. You're probably not going to get a lot of traders participating on Friday morning, which means tomorrow is the day. If you want to trade, tomorrow is going to be it. We've got some important news tomorrow. We've got the jobless claims, of course, at 830. Now, we've talked about this before, obviously. Jobless claims, even Janet Yellen has pretty much discounted this news report now. Jobless claims today are like housing numbers five or six years ago. Remember back in 2009, 2010, right, after the whole credit crunch, after the whole real estate fallout, nobody took any news numbers seriously for the housing market for about a year and a half. Well, that's what's happening right now. We're seeing record lows for jobless claims, but we know that what's really happening is, is people are leaving the job hunt. They're not getting jobs. And if they are getting jobs, all right, they have an MBA from Harvard and they're sweeping the floors, three part-time jobs. See, that's what's happened now, is now, right, Obama is touting this, this lower unemployment rate, right, these lower jobless claims, but we know the non-farm payrolls are not supporting this claim. What's happening is, is that 40, that 40 hour work week is being split up into, into three part-time jobs and those people are leaving the job search. So the bottom line is we know we've got jobless claims tomorrow morning, but I'm not going to care about it. All right. I'm going to look at the number. I'm going to go, oh, wow, whoopsie daisy. And then I'm going back to trading. I'm not expecting anybody to even care about this jobs, these jobless claims right now until we start seeing jobs added. Nobody cares about what they're talking about, all right? So jobless claims tomorrow at 8.30. Be ready for it. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't expect to get a big reaction to it tomorrow morning. Then we move on to 9.45. 9.45 and 10 o'clock. These news numbers are pretty much the same time. 9.45, then right to 10 o'clock. Now, clearly, the 10 o'clock news is more important than the 9.45 news, but it's all going to bleed together, right? It's all going to blend together. Now, over the past few months, we have been watching closely. Remember how at the beginning of the year, Mother Nature took the whipping stick to us, right? We got all beat up by the bad weather beginning of the year. What did that do? That killed the real estate market. Nobody was going to housing. Nobody was going to open houses. They weren't selling any homes. They weren't building any homes. So we've seen a big rebound in that over the past few months. Tomorrow, we're going to see if that continues. Also, manufacturing is a huge number for me. I'm a very big believer that manufacturing is the dog that shakes right the tail, okay? Manufacturing, in my humble opinion, is going to be our ticket out of this mess, putting the middle class back to work so that they can then go and buy those existing homes. They can then go and spend money at the shopping mall for retail sales, right? So I'm a big believer that tomorrow's most important number is probably going to be the index flash crash, right? That PMI manufacturing index. But you have to wonder though, how are the E-minis going to react to that existing home sales? We've seen a lot of equity indexes really react well to the home sales number. So we get a lot of exciting stuff tomorrow. I hope we get a good reaction at 8.30. I don't think we will, but hey, we don't know, so we'll be ready for it. We'll be watching closely. Then we're going to hop, skip, and jump here to 9.45 to 10 o'clock. Again, 9.45, I think it's very, very important news, but lately, though, we've been seeing the bigger reactions to the housing numbers, all right, to those housing numbers. So be ready. We got 8.30 a.m., and we got 9.45 and 10 o'clock. If we got any natty gas traders, you got inventories tomorrow on natural gas at 10:30. Not going to work for me in the trade room, right? But I'll be watching the 10 o'clock, 9:45, and excuse me, and 8:30 news. All right. One last thing, okay? One last thing. We talked about tomorrow being the last day of the week. We got Friday half day. The FOMC meeting minutes, which I still have yet to, p to pick through yet today, been a long day today in the office, I'll be reading those over tonight. A lot, of, a lot of asset managers, a lot of professional traders will be digesting this report this evening. What does that mean? Look for those fireworks tomorrow, all right? It's kind of like the day after FOMC or the day after non-farm payrolls. You can expect tomorrow morning 
everyone will come to their desks and they'll be reacting to what was said in the FOMC meeting minutes. I couldn't tell you what it said right now, long day today, but I will tell you more tomorrow. So now you know what's happening tomorrow for the news. Now, roll those sleeves up. Let's grab some charts. We have been very, very accurate this week on our nightly newsletter, especially on gold, Russell, and crude. So here we are now on gold, right? The yellow metal. I wanted to zoom out here a little bit for you so you can see the kind of the big picture here right now. You can see we got some big trend lines drawn in. And you'll notice we have this wide open space right in the middle. We're staying the heck out of the way in the middle. You know what mama says, right? Don't fill it with the middle. I've got selling opportunities here at the highs. I've got buying opportunities down at the lows. And that's our plan right now on gold. We saw on the VIP chart today, we're completely balanced. Now here we are again. You can see that slight bearish tone, right? We got some lower lows. We got some lower highs here. But until we get below these lows here, until we start making lows below that, right, those lows there, I don't consider this to be bearish at all yet. So we need to get above these highs or get below those lows in order for us to really start to think this is bullish or bearish. All right, so get me out of this area right here on the gold, and then we can start worrying about trending higher or trending lower. Slight tone to the bearish side right now, but as we go lower, I'm buying the 81.4, 78.5, 73.8, and we got the 69.8 down bottom. If we do take off, though, if for some reason this thing catches fire and starts to tumble, look for that 1259.1 to be a nice, easy runner target for you. That's a nice, easy extension to the downside. As we go higher here today, I'm selling the 1302, sorry, excuse me, the 1299, 1303, the 088, and the 1312. All the way up top here, 1317, 1324, and the range highs of 31.4. So until we start to see a trend develop, I have to keep assuming that this market is balanced. It is going to be range bound. And as it goes lower, I'm buying at the levels below me. As it goes higher, I'm selling at the levels above me. All right, guys? That's what you got to know there on the gold futures. Now, over to the, oh, geez, who took this chart out of the... Man, what an ugly chart, right? You can see, what an ugly chart. It's just looking at this thing going, okay, okay, well, where do we go next then? And, you know, guys, I've been trading for almost 14 years now. And what I've learned is that when I have a difficult time, kind of, and I hate, I hate to say the word predict, but when I have a difficult time predicting where it goes next, I, 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 try, to tr I try to trust my gut on that, right? I try to trust my instincts on that. And I know if you're a brand new trader, you don't have those instincts yet. But as you can see right now, though, it's really difficult to tell where this Russell goes. And so earlier on in the week, it was easy. Now, think about being a poker player. And we talked about this in the room. I want you to think about the last time you played poker or maybe you never played poker before. You know, there are a few parallels between day trading and poker. Money management, risk management, psychology, right? Those are all kind of parallels. We can, we can compare poker to day trading. There aren't that many, though. There aren't that many. But one thing we can compare it to is, is what do you do in poker when you get a bad hand? Do you ante up? No, you fold, right? What do you do in poker when you get a good hand, right? A strong hand of poker. What do you do? You put more in the middle. You keep anteing up, right? You keep tossing chips in the middle. So what does that lesson teach us? What does that analogy mean? The moral of that story is, is that when you know you've got a good hand, get out there and do this thing. If you can't tell if you have a good hand or if you know you have a bad hand, don't force it. Because the times when you have a great hand, you want to be clear-minded and confident to trade away. Today was a day where we came into the markets and we knew right away we had been dealt a hand that probably was not going to be a winning hand. We saw it coming a mile away. We had two big days on Monday and Tuesday. So today was a good example where we didn't try to force it. In fact, today was a day where if you sat on hands the entire day, you were just fine. It's better than losing money. So we have a very narrowing range right now on the Russell. Now, a narrowing range means one of two things. Well, actually, it means both. It means two things. It means, first of all, stay patient for the breakout. 
buy the lows, sell the highs, stay away from the middle. Same thing we've been doing on gold this week. So right now, the Russell is pretty much the same personality we have on gold. But the second thing you want to remember about a narrowing, consolidating market like this is get ready. Because eventually, this thing's going to blow like a powder keg, right? It's going to blow like fireworks on the 4th of July. We're going to get something happening here soon. Now, we talked about this yesterday, and I, again, I don't want to use the whole predict word, but we've seen a couple examples here this week already where last Friday we made new lower lows. Last Thursday before OPEX Friday, we made another set of lower lows. This Friday, are we going to go to that 1060 area? Are we going to go down to another lower low? It would make sense. So right now, this consolidation is telling us, be careful right in the middle. Stay the heck away from 1100 because 1100 is clearly what they're waiting for right now. We are balanced to the tick to 1100 right now. So stay the heck away from the middle. As price goes higher, I'm selling 1109, 1112, 1123, 1128. As price goes lower, I'm buying 10.82.9, 10.86.5. I've got these trend lines acting as support as well as the 10.60. So right now, as we are range bound in the Russell, we're treating this just like gold. Until we get a trend that develops, we have to treat this like a range bound market. So I'm buying at support. I'm selling at resistance. Here's the one difference, though. This is the Russell we're talking about. And we know that these E-minis, it's not going to sit like this very long. So once we start to see that market personality start to blow through some of these levels, all right, you know what I'm talking about, right? It's not going up and dancing around. No, this is going to blow right through that level. The minute we start seeing these levels get blown out, right, just getting beat through them, then we start to know we're trending, all right? So we're going to be watching this very closely tomorrow in our trade room. I don't want to predict, but I could easily see us going lower towards the end of the week here into Memorial Day weekend. It would fit the pattern we've seen the last three weeks. All right? I might be wrong about that. If I'm wrong, I don't care. I will trade whatever direction this thing goes. But right now, though, the most important levels I can see on this chart are going to be the 11.096 to the 11.12 and the 10.86.5 to the 1082.9. These are going to be the most important two areas right now on this chart. Once I get through there, then I can start worrying about buying pullbacks or selling retracements. But right now, I'm selling as we go higher. I'm buying as we go lower. Unless, of course, it just torches right through these things and then we'll go to the next levels, right? If we blow right through it, I'm then looking to sell the 23s. If we go right through the low, I'm looking to buy the trend lines. All right? Again, I'm watching closely for market personality. If we start taking off the downside, though, I will start to look to sell short here below that 82.9 with the goal of getting to that 1060. All right? But I will be watching all the support levels below me and all the resistance levels above me for reversal opportunities if the price action does not change to be a trending market. All right, guys, it's a little bit tough right now on the Russell. All right, I know it is. All right, a little bit tough right now. Difficult to tell where we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy lows and sell highs unless, of course, the personality tells me different, and then I'll follow that new trend. All right, so don't say I didn't warn you there on the Russell. Now, last night we talked about crude pushing higher. We went all the way up to that 104. Now I want to show you here Real quick, let's take a quick look here at what we have the rest of the week here. Hold on one second. Where's my... Okay, here is an 89 anchor chart on the crude. Now, the reason why I went out a few more time frames here was because I wanted to show you the big picture now. Okay, look long term now. We got major range highs back at 110. Okay, that's going to be obviously the big high. Our next level overhead is at 106. Now, look at this channel we found here. We get a great price channel. So the channel lows are going to be our, our number one priority. If we can get a chance to buy on a pullback back to those lows, that's going to be your best bet. So mark up that channel on your charts. 
and then wait for the test of that channel if we pull back. We may not pull back this week. It may be next week. Okay, this is a very long-term chart. This is like a weekly chart, all right? Think about it that way. It's not going to be easy to see it pull back all the way right now. But I want to show you this because this is a big deal. You, now that we've broken to those new kind of monthly highs here, new range highs, once we broke above this little range right here, right, once we got above that range, now I need to zoom out now and I got to take a look at the bigger picture. Now I see the big picture, and now I can start to project where we're going to be going next. So 106.01 to 108.15, 106 is the number, right? 106 is definitely the number. And you could even go even further here, and you could take a symmetrical extension here, and that also takes you to 106, all right? If you measure this one, though, right, this one now takes you all the way up to that 110. Right, so think about the ABCD symmetrical pattern, right, which we talk about all the time on our blog, all the time in our in our trade room. This puts us right now up at 106. Now here's the tough part. All right, if calling direction and calling long-term prices, if that was all it took, right, then everybody on CNBC.com would be a billionaire. Okay, there's a reason why those why those uh, those monkeys on CNBC and Bloomberg? There's a reason why they wear that that uh, that suit and tie every day and suffer through the train ride in the city. There's a reason why they do that. All right, trust me. If they knew how to make money off these projections, they wouldn't be going to CNBC.com every day, would they? No, they wouldn't. Right. That's the difference between somebody on a television show and somebody who is in the trenches making money on this stuff. So now that you know direction, now that we know where we're headed, now we're trying to plan. Okay. What I don't know is, is how we get there. I know we're probably going to get to 106, right? I got some good buyer's targets up there, 106. We're probably going to get there, just like I said late last week, just like I said at the beginning of this week. I have a good feeling of where we're going, but how we get there, that I can't tell you. If I had that answer, well, I wouldn't be sitting here right now, right? I'd be sharing a private island here with some billionaires somewhere in the middle of the Pacific. Anyways, plan on crew for tomorrow. We got to 104. I would assume we get a pullback tomorrow. Okay? If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Big deal. If we keep going higher here, I'm going to continue to buy. I'm not going to buy, though, directly into 104.68, but I will be definitely buying if we just turn around and go higher. Where's my best trade going to be? My best trades are going to come buying 102.99, 102.60, 102.25, 101.95. I doubt we come back all the way to 101.68 or 101.30, but that would also be. Now, members, you know what I'm looking for. You know what I'm looking for. We've gone all the way up, took our profit of the highs, like we planned to do. Now, don't blow it now. Wait patiently for price to come back. I'm going to look to buy right around this area here, either later on tonight or tomorrow. I would assume it'll be tomorrow. I would assume tonight we go a little bit sideways here while all the analysts are trying to do what I'm doing for you right now. And then tomorrow morning, we may get some short-term selling opportunities tomorrow morning or overnight. So don't be surprised if you see some great wave patterns short, right? A double top here wouldn't be bad either. Okay, so we'll look for a short here. But remember, you're going counter trend. So if you trade short here overnight, take that money quickly. All right, don't try to let this thing run all the way down to 103. It'd be nice if it did, but we just don't know how far it will go. As far as I'm concerned, we might pull back to 103.50 and then right back up again. So if we get short here, be aware you're trading against the trend. And that means take that profit quick. Okay, a bird in the hand is worth five in the bush when you're trading against the shorts or against the, uh, the long-term trend here. My ideal entry right now, though, is going to be 102.99 down to 101.99, right? I mean, literally, it's that big of a range right now, depending on how far we pull back here overnight. If we don't pull back, I'm waiting for new higher highs, then we're off the races buying again, all right? But the best opportunities right now are not going to be right here, okay? The best opportunity right now is with new higher highs or after price pulls back, and then I got great targets overhead. Today's high will definitely be a good target. What was it, 104? 104.29, something like that, 104.22. I gave you guys 104.22 last night. 104.29 was the high today. So 104.29, 104.29, 104.29, 104.29, 104.29, 104.29, 104.29, 104.29, 104.29, 104.29, 104.29, 104.29, 104.29, 104.29, 104.29, 104.29, 104.29, 104.29,
104.68, whatever the high was. I think it was 104.29. 104.29, 104.68, 105.22, and 106.51 all the way up top. All right, guys? A fantastic week so far. We got one more full day left of the week. It's going to be an exciting Thursday. We got jobless claims. We got new home sales. It's going to be an exciting one. It always is. I want to thank you guys and gals so much for being a part of my newsletter this week. As you can see here, we've had a very profitable week this week here. We're going to finish the week very strong here tomorrow and just a little teeny tiny day on Friday. I want to encourage you guys, stop by schooltrade.com. You can learn more about our three levels of membership as well as register for our free trial. Our free trial is the best in the business. My wife Megan and I created schooltrade.com over 10 years ago. We created this website and this community of traders to help new traders succeed in a safe and a consistent environment. All right, Anybody can teach you how to trade, but teaching you how to do this in a safe environment, that's the key. Not risking too much compared to our reward, operating with a proven trading plan, with discipline to follow that plan, with prudent money management. Guys, come join the free trial. See me tomorrow in the trade room. And once again... Thank you so much for following me this afternoon. Thanks for joining me here for the newsletter. Don't forget to tell a friend about this stuff. Invite them in to come to our trial tomorrow too. And we'll see you guys same time, same place tomorrow evening with our nightly newsletter. Signing off now, my name is Joseph James from Los Angeles, California. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.